well, my point is that this is like an endurance race. And with like any endurance race, you have to get in the zone, and sometimes getting in the zone is a little painful. Like right now. Yeah, I did actually. I feel a lot better. Hey, 3 a.m. Here we are again. Been a while since I've seen you. How you been? I could say I missed you, but that would be a lie. Funny how you ain't around when things are going on. But as soon as my walls go caving in, it's a 3 a.m. You haven't changed a bit. You're still full of questions, making minutes feel like hours. When you give me second guessing, it's running.
It's really dark behind us, so I'm wondering if it's our first squall. But I can't really pick anything up on the radar. It is very dark. Yeah. You think it's a squall? I don't know. Not a single thing on the radar. Well, our boat's just dropped off, but I don't dare take the reef out until this passes. Oh, uh, yeah. How much has the wind dropped off? The wind doesn't really, it's just our boat speed. Oh, I see. I think this morning it was a it was a squall. You think? But it, it didn't rain. It did a little, just oh. sprinkled. Very very light. Oh, you should have woken me. There was nothing to there was like nothing to see. Because I was gonna shake the reef out, and then I put my hand out. I was like, oh, it's raining a little. I was like, 
Maybe I should have. Yes, how fast we are going now. Eight. Seven and a half. On my phone, I recorded 15 knots. What? <laughs> Must have gone down a wave or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much? Seven? Seven and a half. Yeah. Tell us about what you've learned today. I haven't learned anything, really. How about you? What did you learn? I don't think that I've learned anything, but... You know how I felt really crappy yesterday? Kind of get used to that. But I agree, it's hard because the the swell has been on the side most of this trip. It reminded me of when I did Ironman. Yeah. For those of you who are not familiar with what I mean, Ironman is. It's four kilometer swim, 180 kilometers on the bike, and after that it's a marathon. It's a big race and you do it all in one day. And after the swim, the swim had taken me I think an hour and a half. It was 180 kilometers. And the 91st kilometers of that bike part was very uphill. And I remember that 30 kilometers into the bike part, where I still had more of a half of the uphill to climb, I felt like shit. I was like, what did I get myself in time? And that's when you're not really in the rhythm, when you're still figuring out how to get in your, in your zone. Yeah. And I think that's what happened to me yesterday. I'm not in the zone. <laughs> I'm getting in the zone. Would... Well, my point is that this is like an endurance race. And with like any endurance race, you have to get in the zone. And sometimes getting in the zone is a little painful. Like right now. Should we reef? What's the wind speed? It's 18. Yeah, what's our road speed? 7.68 Yeah, maybe we should bring it a little bit. Alright. boyfriend <laughs> mm. you're very sexy in this leather apron honey what's that it's, it's not very nice to wear a shirt <laughs> <laughs> I think it would behoove us to try to keep our speed up. So, speed down, so. so Brian had very nicely warmed up some food and made some rice to go with the food for tonight's dinner. It was a bag of a stew that I had prepared a few weeks ago and you know normally it's okay, you can, can eat it after a few weeks, but um, we put the fork in our mouth and we're like there is a bit of a funky taste to it and it was probably okay but when we're two people feeling like there's a funky taste to the stew that was vacuum sealed a few weeks ago we're like not in the middle of the Atlantic so I'm gonna I'm gonna redo dinner uh, uh. Okay, so one thing that I like to make, um, I'm just gonna make a very simple rice. One thing that I like to do to uh, accommodate the rice is to first um, gently fry it in a little bit of butter and then mix it with some red lentils and it gives it a nice buttery flavor um, and it's just nicer than just rice. Ready for your apron. Uh, hey Ryan, can you throw the rest of the stew overboard? Alright.
water. second your center of gravity is in one place the next one is in another place crazy it is really challenging to function in that sea state it is really, really challenging. We are in uh, touch with two boats. Uh, one of the boats is one day ahead of us and the other one is one day behind us. They are experiencing the exact same condition and they're also finding it very difficult to function in that sea state. Um, we're all praying that by the weekend, so tomorrow or Sunday, it kind of flattens or, you know, uh, at least gets committed, you know, like I, I wish that the waves would commit to one direction But they don't they have not committed they really they don't they don't know where they want to come from And uh, it makes life a little bit difficult for us at the moment At least this is a long passage, so there is tons of time for the conditions to change So, in all this craziness and, and this difficulty state, one of the highlights of the day is when we receive emails from our friends and also from our patrons. Um, it's so nice, it's so much fun to read the emails and then answer. And we received an email from our short support and our good friend Steven. And, uh, uh, and Steven reacted to uh, one of the posts that I made yesterday on the live tracker. Look at what he sent us. <laughs> Brian, right. look at this. Look at what Steven sent us. <laughs> That's funny. Isn't it awesome? Yeah. That's funny. That's awesome. Well, one foot in front of the other eventually will make it. Good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. Child. Now it's showing its own